Hello everybody, I'm Glip and this is my 5G course on IoT Understanding Channel. As for today, we're going to continue with 5G uh, dual connectivity mode and uh, we're going to talk about more such technologies as a split beer, as concept as um, genome B virtualization and PDCP packet duplication technology. So let's start with split beer. Split beer, it is such technology that um, we can split radio beer on PTCP layer. And uh, in that way, it helps us to support such concept as GNLB virtualization. GNLB virtualization is when we uh, split our 5G base station into central unit and a few dedicated uh, distributed units distributed units and we can have an interface of one between them uh, basically basically there are many possible options uh, how exactly we can split them yeah but uh, in terms of uh, radio interface protocols in 5g we can um, we can have such situation is when central unit is responsible for PDCP processing and uh, for uh, high layers of radio interface and distributed units are responsible for low layer processing for physical, for MAC, for RLC and again there are many possible options uh, it totally depends on uh, how vendors and manufacturers can do it. Uh, we can have even such option is when physical layer we can implement into integrated um, active antenna system with massive MIMO, let's say. And uh, medium access control layer and radio link control layer, they can be implemented into radio units and all other layers are uh, inside central unit that uh, may be located somewhere um, not only inside uh, baseband processing unit but also um, on a unified hardware platform uh, as a kind of a server but this is again a huge topic and um, this concept of splitting the radio beer it helps us to support this interesting concept so again and why we split beer uh, in PTCP layer in order to have a kind of a single point for controlling all other uh, low layers uh, in order to have a better load balancing, in order to uh, know how to balance traffic between distributed units. Um, and basically, this technology, split beer technology, it, it's all, it has already standardized in release 12 in LTE, so it was uh, pretty easy to... <laughs> Again, rethink about it in 5G for 3GPP organization and for other uh, vendors and for manufacturers that are working on that. And it uh, again goes hand in hand with such technology as PTCP packet duplication. So let's talk uh, a little bit more about PTCP packet duplication. So, PDCP packet duplication technology, it is uh, just a simple solution to meet strong URLC requirements. Um, it is basically happens after uh, establishing connection with uh, master genome B, after adding secondary genome B, after uh, reconfigure RC connection, yeah? So, I mean, uh, PDCP packet duplication works um, not only for control layer but also for uh, user uh, plane 
uh, layers. And it happens in dual connectivity mode. So after establishing dual connectivity mode, yes, master GNOB can uh, activate or deactivate packet duplication. Uh, for example, is when user equipment moved um, in cell borders between two cells, between two cells uh, related to uh, master node and secondary node. And in this cell border, user equipment experience bad radio conditions. Uh, so, as you may know, uh, bad radio conditions is, uh, um, may uh, lead to um, handover drops, um, it may decrease uh, uh, throughput, and all other bad stuffs, yeah? So in this case, we can mitigate uh, these uh, negative things by activating PDCP packet duplication and just duplicate PDCP packets uh, uh, in, to duplicate information on PDCP layer uh, just from the same, uh, to send the same packets from master GNOB and the same information from uh, secondary GNOB. And in this case, a user equipment have to perform a packet elimination just to uh, receive one of them, which is better, yeah, for example, and uh, eliminate unnecessary packets. So that's why Packet duplication should be activated only in a bad radio condition and only is when um, blocker rates for both radio channels from both sides are um, not exactly the same but at least similar to each other. Only in this case, only in a bad radio condition, packet duplication. Packet uh, duplication technology will uh, works as best as it can and uh, will give us a really um, uh, will help us to achieve uh, real URL C cases. It may um, reflect on um, increasing handover KPIs. It may um, help us to have a less retransmission on uh, Mac layer, layer on um, RC layer due to radio link fail, yeah? Just to duplicate information and um, user equipment will, we will receive the best of uh, these things. So this is basically <laughs> Uh, goes hand in hand with such a technology as a split beer. And uh, at the end of my video, let's uh, talk about advantages and disadvantages of using 5G dual connectivity mode. So, advantages um, is all about early 5G rollout, especially for uh, high frequencies, especially for millimeter, millimeter waves. Uh, in this case, uh, cell size will be just a few hundred meters and it would be necessary and vital to uh, use it in a dual connectivity mode with uh, much more broad and 4G coverage, which has um, uh, not only a good coverage but also a good radio condition um, and of course in this case in this dual connectivity mode uh, you will be able to reuse of um, current LTE infrastructure in early uh, 5G deployment options in 3, 3A, 3X options for example in this case you can still as, a, as an operator you can still uh, have some return on investment. Um, of course, such a dual connectivity mode uh, helps us to achieve um, 
enhance mobile broadband uh, cases and uh, their requirements for high throughput uh, for user equipment peak throughput and uh, network throughput as well uh, such things as um, PSP packet duplication and split beer technology can help us to achieve a good uh, and really um, reliable connection and a reduced latency by uh, reducing uh, retransmissions on RSC level or on uh, MAC or uh, RLC level. In, in, it helps us to uh, reduce latency as well. And of course, improved load balancing uh, if we uh, can deploy uh, virtualized G0B with a central unit, with distributed units. And between these units, we can uh, have some kind of a load balancing mode. Uh, but 5G dual connectivity is not only about uh, advantages. There are some uh, cons, such uh, disadvantages as increasing user equipment complexity and uh, probably cost as uh, such a user equipment uh, should be able to work in uh, this mode uh, should be able to have a simultaneous connection with 5G and LTE base stations and of course uh, it will uh, increase their cost uh, the second disadvantage is increasing user equipment power consumption because again in this case uh, you have to simultaneously uh, works with two uh, radio channels so it means uh, you should have uh, uh, simultaneously powered on um, uh, independent uh, radio um, chains with amplifiers with filters and all of this uh, may increase uh, UE power consumption as a uh, uh, Qualcomm company investigated in their uh, in one of their report uh, from 40% uh, to 110% uh, up to uh, two times it may increase and uh, in addition to that uh, there are some there are maybe some vendor specific uh, requirements or limitations for example um, if you want to deploy um, if you want to have a dual connectivity mode uh, in your network um, you probably will have to um, to switch off such um, feature as LTE bundling or you may have some more strict uh, requirements for X2 or XN interfaces. So there are maybe some vendor specific um, limitations and license of course. So basically it was uh, a short lesson about dual connectivity mode in 5G. If you like this uh, video, if you want to know more about 5G technologies, uh, subscribe, like, and uh, stand by with uh, Understanding IoT channel. Goodbye.